Hi there everybody and welcome to this video. So today we're going to talk about cash management in Business Central and more specifically we're going to set up a new bank account and process some payments on that new bank account. Um, so the first thing we need to do is set up our new bank account. So what I'm going to do here is in my demonstration environment I'm going to go to cash management and I'm going to go to bank accounts. So this is the screen on BC where all of my bank accounts are held. Um, so if I were to add a bank account, it would be on this particular screen. So to add a new bank account, I'm going to go new up at the top here, which brings up a new bank account card. So I'm going to give my bank account a number. So I'm going to just go with Lloyd's. So you can go with a numbering sequence if you want to. So you can set up an automated numbering sequence where the first bank is bank 001, the second one is bank 002, etc. So in the same way that you'd have um, an incrementing sales invoice numbering sequence, you can have an incrementing bank account numbering sequence as well. But in my experience, it makes more sense to have the name of the bank account as the number, just because you'll be using this throughout the system. And it makes a bit more sense than a simple bank 001 or 002. It makes a bit more sense to have the um, name or something a bit more identifiable as the number for the bank. So next, I'm going to input the name of my bank account. So I'm just going to call it Lloyd's current account. And then I can, if I want to, put in a branch number and an account number here. So it's not necessary, but I can put in this information if I want to. So Furthermore, coming down to the communication tab, I can put in the address details of my bank branch if I wish to do that, but I'm not going to today. Um, what we'll do is we'll just move forward to the posting tab. And for now, we're gonna focus on the bank account posting group field. So this is a really important field on the bank account. It's the field which links the bank account to the general ledger. So if I drop down here, I can say select from full list. And right now you can see I've got a few bank account posting groups set up and they're all posting to these general ledger codes. Um, so I'm going to set up a new bank account posting group and how I normally organize these bank account posting groups is that I use the same code for my bank account posting group as the number for my bank. I think it just keeps um, everything organized and makes it nice and easy to identify. So in the next field here on the GL account number, I am gonna say set up a new account here. And I'm gonna go 40101. And I'm just gonna give it a name called Lloyd's current account. So we're actually on another table right now. So we're on the GL account card, which is the general ledger account table. And what I've done is I've set up a new account. Um, it's 40101. And we've got the name, which is Lloyd's current account. And it's an account on the balance sheet. And I can set up some other fields here, but that's one for another video. And do bear in mind here, I've got direct posting enabled here on this particular account as well, but I can disable that if I want to. And also the balance is zero on this account right now. So I'm gonna say, okay. So I've got my new bank account posting group set up here, and that is Lloyd's and the GL account number that we're posting to with the Lloyd's bank account posting group is 40101. So let me say okay. And uh, as part of one of the most recent updates in BC, 
we get a warning that tells us the selected bank account posting group is linked to a general ledger account that allows direct posting. So that's pointing to the tick box that I showed you just now on the general ledger account card where direct posting was marked as yes. So it continues to say the bank account reconciliation process might become problematic if the instructions in this documentation are not followed. Um, do you want to know more? So we can say yes, and that will take us to the documentation, but I'm going to say no. Um, but basically what this message is telling us is that the general ledger account to which I have linked this bank account has direct posting enabled. Now this could cause a problem. Um, say for example, if somebody posts directly to my new general ledger account 40101, that entry, because it was posted directly to the general ledger account and not to the bank account ledger, it will not show up in my bank reconciliations. Um, so that's one for another video, but for now, I'm just going to press no on this message. And as you can see, we've got a bank account posting group assigned of Lloyd's, and that is posting to GL account number 40101. So there's lots more fields on the bank account card. I can do things like set up currency codes and also set up things like a payment export or a bank statement import format. So those are all ones for another video, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and process some manual payments on this particular bank account because we're ready to process those. So just to summarize before I go ahead and process a payment, all we did was we set up a new bank account we input a number, a name, a branch number, and an account number, and I set up a new bank account posting group. So in order to go ahead and process some payments against this bank account, I'm gonna come back to cash management, and I'm gonna to go to cash receipt journals. And I'm just going to go into my general cash receipt journal batch, and I'm going to input a payment line here. So I'm going to select customer. I'm going to go with a date and corporation. I'm going to make the amount minus 100. And I'm going to select the balancing account as our new Lloyd's current account. So bear in mind, as I mentioned earlier, I can do lots of other things like make my bank account a foreign currency, um, and sort of do lots of other configuration, but those will all be covered in another video. Um, also, this payment is being posted to um, customer 10,000 and my Lloyd's bank account. Um, I'm not applying it to any invoices, but I can use the apply entries function here to apply that payment to an outstanding invoice if I wanted to. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say post, and I'm gonna say Yes. So I get a message here saying the journal lines were successfully posted. And if we go back to our bank account now, we can observe that in the Lloyd's current account, the balance is 100. So I can drill down into that balance and I can see the details. So we have the document number reference from my cash receipt journal. We've got the description, we've got some dimensions and we've got my amount here as well. And here on the right hand side, you can see the related general ledger entry. So one side of the transaction affected the accounts receivable account, which is 40400. The other side of the transaction affected the Lloyd's current account, which is 40101, the new general ledger account that we set up. But just to illustrate that, what I'm going to do is let me go to my chart of accounts and I'm going to search for my new general ledger account. And we can see the balance here is also 100 can drill into the entry just to see the information underlying the 100 GBP there. 
So what we'll do next is we'll just process an outgoing payment. So again, let me go to cash management and this time we'll go to payment journals and I'll just input a very simple payment as well. So account type is vendor. Let's go vendor 10,000 and I will input an amount of 100 and I'll select my Lloyds Bank account. So again, I can apply this payment to an outstanding invoice if I wanted to. And in fact, there are other functions such as suggest vendor payments here, which I can use to pull through outstanding invoices from my vendor ledger. But I'll cover that in another video. So for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to post that transaction. I'll say yes. And it tells me the journal lines were successfully posted once again. So the implications of this, well, let me go back to our bank accounts. I can go into my Lloyd's account and we can see the balance is zero. So if I go into that zero, we can see that we have another line here where the description is that of our vendor, Fabricam Incorporated, and it's minus 100 for the amount there. So typically in um, a real life environment, the document numbers would be a little bit more meaningful. As you can see, they're just random G numbers here for general journal, I guess, but you can make them um, um, sort of linked back to the cash receipt and payment journal respectively, just so you know exactly where those have come from. But you can see we've got those two entries that we posted from our cash receipt and our payment journal now sitting on the bank account ledger entries. They also have an open tick box here, which um, denotes that they are unreconciled entries and we can cover reconciling those off in another video. So just the final step, what we'll do here is we'll go back to our chart of accounts and just check our general ledger code. And you can see the balance here now is zero. And I can see that I have one more entry in there for minus 100. So because we linked GL account 40101 to our bank account, every transaction posted to that particular bank account will be automatically posted to 40101. And normally when we use a general ledger code that's linked to a bank account, it's best practice to disable the direct posting here. And all that means is that users cannot directly post to this general ledger code only Business Central can post to this GL code because um, it's set up with direct posting is equal to null. So there are a few other ways that we can process payments in BC as well. So there's bank deposits, payment reconciliation journals. There's also the payment registration journal as well. But we'll cover those off in uh, um, another video. Um, I hope you guys found this useful and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.